Hello everyone! This video is an introduction to character tables. We will be talking about A and B representations, linear functions, rotations, quadratic functions, and we'll only mention very briefly cubic functions. And don't worry, there will be no math, orbitals are functions, so we'll be talking about orbitals a lot. But we'll be treating orbitals as if they were shapes. I know that this is a primitive approach, but Davidson takes the same approach and it suffices. So two videos ago, when we were talking about what is a group, we said that it's possible to represent the effect of symmetry operations on a molecule using matrices. It's a great news, because it saves us a lot of work. There are a few ways to do this, depending on application. One way is to anchor vectors pointing in x, y and z direction in every atom of the molecule and see what happens to the vectors when we do symmetry operations on them. Or, for instance, we can place vectors along the bonds and see what happens to the vectors when we do symmetry operations on them. Regardless of what set of vectors or functions we use, we will get series of numbers. This series of numbers is called representation, because it's a numerical way of representing the effect of symmetry operations on a molecule. We will be doing this in future videos, and I promise you, you will find it super easy, trust me. Anyway, what is crucial for now is that these representations are reducible. They can be broken down into so-called irreducible representations. And by the way, I need to introduce you to one important term. The vectors that we use to obtain the reducible representations representation are said to form a basis of that representation. So for the representation on the left, we have two vectors that are basis of this representation, and on the right there are nine vectors that are basis of this representation. Anyway, let's come back to the main point. Reducible representations are broken down to the irreducible representations. So let's take the example where we place vectors along the bonds. We get a reducible representation 2, 0, 2, 0. For the moment, don't worry how we get that. And so if you add up a1 and b1 together, we get 1 plus 1 equals 2, 1 minus 1 equals 0, 1 plus 1 equals 2, and 1 minus 1 equals 0. So that is 2, 0, 2, 0. So character tables are tables which contain a list of irreducible representations for a particular point group. Any reducible representation, no matter what basis we use, can be broken down to some combination of irreducible representations. So irreducible representations are like building blocks. Irreducible representations are given symbols a1, a2, and so on, and for now I can treat them as random labels. In the future videos we will find out that these labels are in fact not so random, but that's a detail. Just a side note, reducible representations, on the other hand, by convention, are given symbol tau. So for the rest of the video we'll be examining some irreducible representations and we'll be talking about some important properties that they have. Our first step will be to try and reconstruct some of the irreducible representations so that we get some insight as to where the numbers like 1, 1, 1, 1 come from. So let's take some vector, let's call it vector y, because it's aligned with the y-axis, and let's do C2V symmetry operations on it. So E does nothing, C2 reverses direction, so V1 becomes minus V1, sigma xz reverses direction as well, and sigma yz does nothing. We can write it down in a more compact way like that. So we get series of numbers that correspond to B2 irreducible representation. So let's take PY orbital and do the same symmetry operation on it, so we get the same outcome. Some orbital hanging in a vacuum is not very interesting for us, nor very realistic, but we could imagine this orbital on an oxygen, if we for instance were analyzing a water molecule. So next we might anchor vectors in every atom of the water molecule, and let's make the vectors point in the y direction again. Such set of vectors is called a translational vector, because it corresponds to the translation of the whole molecule, in this case, in the y direction. Effectively, we treat all these three vectors as one entity, and it's important because we will later say that n vectors will give rise to n by n matrix, so no, we are treating them as one thing. And behold, if we do symmetry operations on this ty translational vector, then we get the same series of numbers, again. So I deliberately chosen these examples to show you that regardless if we do operations on vy vector, py orbital, or ty translational vector, the results is the same. Basically, all we need is a single entity with a sense of direction along y-axis. And that is what y effectively means here. Similarly, if we use vector vx, or orbital px, or tx translational vector, we would get b1. And if we take vector vz, or orbital pz, or tz translational vector, then we would get a1. 
How about ours? They are so-called rotational vectors. I have already told you in one of the videos that you can think of them as rotating cylinders. You might already expect what numbers we are going to get by looking at the table, but let's make sure that we indeed get the right numbers. So let's place this cylinder along z-axis and in principle it can rotate clockwise or anti-clockwise, but let's stick to the convention. So E does nothing, the cylinder rotates clockwise, now C2. Let's focus on the red dot. We can see that the rotation by 180 80 degrees takes the arrow here and the direction is preserved. If we do sigma xz, then we reflect the arrow to the other side and now notice that the direction does change and similarly with sigma yz. So rz gives us a2. How about rx? When we place a cylinder according to the set of axes, then the cylinder looks from this perspective like a circle. Just notice that when we do C2 on this rotating circle, then the direction of rotation changes. It also changes when we do xz reflection, and notice that in this perspective, sigma xz looks like a line, and then sigma yz does not affect the direction of rotation because it cuts the cylinder along the plane of rotation. Similarly, a cylinder along y-axis will look like a rectangle from a side, C2 reverses the direction, because what matters is the fact that C2 axis is perpendicular to the cylinder. Anyway, sigma xz does not reverse the direction of rotation, because it slices along the rotation plane, but this time sigma yz does change direction, because it slices along the cylinder, which means that it cuts through the rotation plane. So our results agree with the table, it would be disturbing if they didn't. Let's move on. Character tables have interesting properties. Look for instance at xy. If we multiply the x row by y row, we get plus times plus is plus, minus times minus is plus, and then a plus times minus is minus twice. So what effectively happened is that we were able to multiply irreducible representation that describes entities with y-directionality with irreducible representation that describes entities with x-directionality, and we obtained a representation that describes entities with xy-symmetry. We would get the same result if we place the dxy orbital at the center of the coordinates and perform C to V operations on it. So we might start to suspect that xy is a sort of a code for dxy orbital, and that's true. Notice that for these square orbital, the code is a bit different than what you might expect. Let's look at our age group. We can easily spot all the orbitals. It seems logical that for instance xy is a code for dxy, but why is that? Well, that is the formula for the angular part for dxy wave function. So let's do some recap. A wave function for any orbital is made of radial and angular part. They can be separated. The radial part describes how the wave function changes with respect to the radius, and this part is left unaltered by any symmetry operations, and what matters is the angular part. And if you look up the wave function formulas in some books, you may not be able to see this relationship, because often wave functions are given in spherical coordinates, not the Cartesian coordinates. So we know how to spot irreducible representations that describe symmetries of d orbitals like in our age group. But in some groups like C2V, some d orbitals are seemingly not there. However, we have some terms separated by commas. What it means is that any of these terms can be described by A1, or in fact any sum or any difference of these terms. So we can build 2z squared minus x squared minus y squared from these blocks. And the same with dz squared minus y squared, obviously. So that's all about linear and quadratic functions, the last column are cubic functions. Analogically to what we said about d orbitals, this column describes f orbitals. So here is a paper from 1967 with a list of irreducible representations for f orbitals. Printing is a bit blurred, but in the first column we see f, z, cubed, and so on, and if you zoom at c to v, it corresponds perfectly to what we see in a character table, obviously because f orbitals have more complex functions, which translates to more complex shapes, it is not likely that you will be asked to do any manual manipulations on these orbitals. Also please notice that the last three columns refer to symmetries of orbitals on a central atom, which is in the middle of our coordinate system. We will deal with ligand orbitals differently, but that is a topic for future videos. The last thing that I would like to mention are matrices, because I opened a video saying that symmetry operations can be expressed in the form of matrices. So what are the matrices? Here, they are just one by one matrices. This matrix is called transformation matrix, and because it's one by one matrix, it's just a number. The reason why these matrices are so small is because in this video we did examples where vectors or orbitals transformed into themselves, one, or in the negative of themselves, minus one. This is characteristic of A and B representations. In the next video, we will do E and T representations, which have slightly bigger matrices. 
And finally, time for questions. The answers will be given at the end of the video. The link to the slides is below, as always. Now, regarding the third question, point A is easy, point B tells you to draw a rotational vector, RZ for ethene. It sounds difficult, but Davidson is not demanding. It looks like that. Basically, it's a vector that makes the molecule rotate around Z-axis. Davidson never asks you to draw any difficult rotational vectors. Question 3 might look a bit pointless because the answers are in a table, but what I want you to do is basically write the answers in the form operation vector transformation matrix vector. The only operation that can make you think a bit more is I. Does I change the direction of rotation for RZ? We have plus one here, so no. The direction of rotation is preserved, but I hope that you will find some nice way to justify it. I hope it helps. Thank you for watching. See you next video. Bye!